All right, got another home project for you this weekend. The porch and carport area of the new house just had six by six pressure treated posts holding up the roof. I decided to wrap these to make them more decorative. The top half I'm gonna wrap in cedar and the bottom half I'm gonna wrap in uh, other boards um, and bump it out a little bit so it's a two tiered uh, pillar moving forward. Let's get busy. Okay, so the project is to wrap these exterior posts that are holding up the carport and the roof for the front porch. Uh, these are six by six pressure treated, um, all fine and good. The builder was going to wrap them in uh, vinyl or aluminum like they did up here. Um, but after putting in this railing here, which I built myself, um, I got the idea of wrapping these posts in cedar. So that's what I'm going to try to do, just decorate them up a little bit. So these are all approximately eight feet. Obviously the one on the porch is a little bit smaller there. The first four feet I'm going to uh, box, uh, pull that out. I think the total width will be uh, just under 10 inches. Um, and that will be all trimmed out nicely and will match the green and uh, kind of tan color or cream color that is the siding colors of the house. And then this upper half here, I will just uh, face with the cedar, which I have here. So what I'm going to start with is cut uh, two by fours, and that's what I'm going to use to box away from here. And I'm basically going to create a ring of two by fours all the way around in the middle, and then at the top of the boxed area. As these are six by sixes, you see that they're five and a half inches by five and a half inches. So I'm going to cut the two by fours to be five and a half inches plus the one and a half inch thickness of the two by four. So I'll be cutting, um, cutting them to seven inches of length and I will need 12 of them per post. Let's get cutting. two by fours cut to block this out. Um, I marked a line here at 47 and a half inches. Like I said, these are basically eight foot. I want the bottom to come up just under four feet. I'm gonna have uh, two by six that kind of is cut at an angle, so it acts as like a cap transition between these two. And that'll be an inch and a half, and then the rest will be the cedar. So. I'm going to put three rings of the 2x4s for my blocking, one at the 47 and a half, one down here at two feet, and then one just above uh, three quarters of an inch above the cement. And I'll just use this as a spacer for that one. All right, let's get them up here.
Okay, so there's the blocking done for one of the poles. It's all on there nice and solid and square. Um, the base was a little bit challenging because of the metal brackets, so um, it fit together okay, but not as perfectly as these other ones did. Um, but any deviation that comes from that will be covered up by the trim that you, you'll see that I'm going to add to these, so should be fine. But all on there nice and solid, not going anywhere. And uh, yeah, let me get the blocking on these other three poles and then I'll show you what's next. Okay, we got all four of them blocked in. These first three are 47 and a half inches tall. This fourth one is a little bit shorter, obviously, because uh, the step up for the porch. It's not short enough to be kind of in level with that, but it's a slight step up, so it's going for, I was going for the same proportion, so pretty close there. Yeah, all right, so the next thing to do is to cut the facing boards that will go here. So the height of these, I'll cut them to 47 right there. That means I'll put the top at the top of this 2x4 and the bottom will extend just slightly below that ring of 2x4s there. And then I'll do the same thing of having it the board flush here, extend by 3 quarters of an inch here, and then wrap it like that. So this will be, let's say, eight and a half plus three quarters should make it nine and a quarter will be the width that we're looking for there. So nine and a quarter by 47. Let's get to cutting. Okay, there's the first one boxed in. A um, couple things I want to say here. Number one, this is some three quarter inch marine grade plywood that I had left over from a previous project. Um, not what I would have bought for this. Uh, I didn't have enough for it to do all of them, so I bought some uh, 1x12s and I'll be using those for 
some of the further ones. But uh, yeah, it's good enough quality and uh, honestly it's going to get painted so it'll be protected from the weather. That shouldn't be an issue. Yep, that's what it looks like. All nice and boxed in. It did get a little wonky here as I would expected uh, because of the uh, the brackets on the bottom and how that wasn't exactly what it needed to be from that perspective uh, as square as I needed it to be due to those metal brackets. Um, also you saw me change the location of the ripping fence on the table saw. Um, one of the pieces I could only get nine inch pieces out of instead of nine and a quarter. So I knew that there was going to be a slight gap here. It gets a little bit bigger on the bottom obviously. But I will have um, inch and a half trim that comes here. So uh, that will easily cover that fine. And you won't notice that once it's all trimmed, caulked, and painted. Alright, let me get the rest of these cut and boxed in. And then we'll go from there. Alright, little update here. Um, I can be a little bit of a per perfectionist from time to time and uh, I got all these boxed up and the one over here by the front porch just looked so much better and the reason it's all nice and square and the reason for that is the blocking on the bottom didn't have those brackets underneath of it. And I don't know why I didn't think of this earlier, but there's no reason why that bottom row of blocking can't go directly above the bracket. So, came over here to this one, pulled the sheath cheating boards off, raised that bottom row of blocking up. It fits so much better now. I'm going to put my facing boards back on and then I will go do the same for this one and this one so yep sometimes you gotta go backwards before you can go forwards but I think I'm gonna be much happier with it when I'm done so back to it alright I got them all squared up again I feel much better about that um, no bowing out at the bottom they're all nice and square and tidy any small gaps that are there will easily get covered by the trim but first and foremost they are square so I hate making mistakes I hate having to rework stuff but uh, sometimes it's worth it and this is definitely one of those times so that's where I'm gonna quit for the night um, the next step is gonna be to cut the pieces for this kind of cap. I'm not sure how well that shows up on the camera, but I'm going to cut 10 degree bevels on both sides so that any water that runs off, falls on here, will run off of here. Uh, and it just gives it a cool look to have it beveled like that. So that's what I'm going to do. This was just a test piece just to figure out what angle would work and this will come off and I'll get one that has the full um, point on the end of it but I'll pick back up there tomorrow alright we're back out here the next morning I always like to take a good look at my work the next morning see if I'm still happy with it make sure that there's nothing uh, that I would like to change with it and these all look good. I'm really glad I went back and moved that bottom row of blocking up because it made a big difference in how square these are. Um, I still could have covered it up with the trim, but I think it would have been somewhat noticeable. So I'm very happy I went back and did that. So the next thing that we're going to do is cut these two by sixes to make this cap here. Um, I did a little messing around with the table saw last night and a 10 degree cut is what I thought looked best. Just enough to give it a, a little bit of a slant, a little bit more character. So 
basically what I'm doing is taking some two by sixes, running it through a table saw with the ten degree the blade set at the ten de ten degree angle. Then I'm moving the fence on the table saw back so that it's four and a half inches from the fence to the blade, and then running it through again with the angle going the same direction. So you're getting two parallel planes. Then take this over to the um, cutoff saw and uh, you can't just lay this flat on the cutoff saw and cut it at a 45 degree angle because when I, I want that 10 degree angle to be flush against this. So you need to lift up the back of the board so that that 10 degree angle is flush with the fence of the cutoff saw then do your 45 degree angle and uh, that looks good I, this, this side over here was done that way and it's perfect so uh, yeah let me get a couple 2 by 6s I'll get them ripped to the right dimensions and then I'll show you how I cut them with the cutoff saw against this fence and then cut my 45 degree angle Then I'm going to mark off my distance for the width of the 6x6, which should be 5.5 inches, and then I'll do that same cut this way. There we go. There's my angle. There's my 45 degree. Now I just need to cut three more and then I can get those screwed into place. So there's the first one. Looks pretty good. Uh, a few small. Uh, number one, I'm going to sand that to round the, the edges a little bit, and then, like that small gap there, will get caulked, and this is getting painted, so you won't see that at all. But I really like how that looks. Gives it a little, little bit, breaks up the 90 degree angles, and gives it a little bit more dimension. So happy with that. Let me put this camera aside and I'll get, the, get these pieces cut for the other three posts. Okay, so there we go. I got all four of the posts capped. Turned out awesome. 
I really like how that looks. So next I'm going to hit both of these with the orbital sander, top and bottom, smooth off those edges, round them a little bit, and then hit uh, the bases as well because it won't be as easy to sand once I put the trim on there. So there we go, all sanded down. You can see how nicely that rounds out. I'll still have to come back with some caulk and filler for some of these smaller cracks. And do finish sanding, but I have it. I really wanted to get the top part of it set because I'm gonna set the cedar boards down on top of that. And I wanted to get that taken care of and nice and smooth before I started putting the cedar on there. So I have that sanding done for all four of them. And uh, yeah, time to start cutting cedar finally. All right, finally time to put the cedar up. Um, I bought one by eight boards and I will have to rip these down slightly. I'm gonna be a little bit more careful about ripping these boards to the appropriate width than I was down here because there won't be any trim pieces up here the, any small di discrepancies can be covered up down here. So, process I'm going to do here, I cut these with a small angle on the bottom to match the 10 degree angle there. I'm going to put this up here, line it up where I want it. For example, I'm buttoning this out ever so slightly to account for this bracket that's up here. And then uh, I'll clamp this in place. I'll put the other the next board up against it here, mark my line, rip that line, screw and nail this one in place, and then the repeat, that, repeat that process for the other three boards. There's one board up. I'm going to repeat it for the other three. There's the pillar with cedar on the top. Now all that's left is trim work. So I am going to put uh, a small border of cedar around the top of each one of these. Very happy with how those turned out. And then I'll have to put the trim around the corners of these two. All right, let's get to the trim. All right, there we go. First one completely done. So for this trim up here, first off I cut a bevel on the top so that any water that gets on top of there will run off. Um, number two, as I was cutting those I was marking them each individually to make sure I came as close as I could to uh, making them fit perfectly on the corners. And I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. Uh, for down here, uh, obviously when on any construction site there's plenty of leftover lumber and uh, me I hate throwing stuff away so I took uh, old 2x4's 2x6's stuff that was just gonna get thrown away 
uh, ripped them into half inch strips and that's what I used for that. Um, once that gets sanded up and caulked and painted it'll look beautiful so saved myself quite a bit of money by doing that versus going to try to buy some molding in the store you know, especially with lumber prices what they are these days so that is the finished pillar uh, uh, quite a difference from the plain 6x6 six uh, pressure treated post that was there when I started so very happy with that um, I'll do the caulking and painting in another video all right so that's the the finish trim for one three more to go all right and there it is started the weekend with four very plain six by six pressure treated posts that were holding this up and I am very impressed with the improvement that that makes still got to come back and sand caulk and paint the bases but I couldn't be more pleased with this could not be more pleased with how that can't turned out If you want to see more stuff like this, comment, like, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.